I think it's time that we get started. I'm Mary Ann Bays, and I'm filling in today for Ed Defoe, the president of uh, NJCBA. I'm the vice president, and I've been working with Ed to put together this uh, lunchtime series. Uh, we're very pleased today uh, to have Laz and Jose Correa joining us from uh, Argus Security Division. Security is a very um, important topic in our industry. And um, I, I know that a lot of people here are interested in launching businesses and uh, they're gonna need to understand uh, New Jersey security regulations for cannabis businesses. And Laz and Jose are here to talk about that. Um, uh, they've studied the regulations as we know them so far. Um, as you know, there uh, are no regulations yet uh, with details for the adult use program. But what we can do is have an expectation that security requirements will be at least as rigorous as they were for the medical program. Uh, and I, I've worked now uh, on cannabis business application projects in eight states. And so I can tell you that, that the security requirements, while different from state to state, have a lot in common too. So there's a lot that we know about what good security means in this industry. Um, and uh, for those of you who are planning businesses, it's not too early to start to figure all of that out. Um, so uh, in, let's get started here. And by the way, I, I saw a comment that said, uh, Laz and Jose must be brothers. Yes. And um, if you think of the example, they're twins. Um, so it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, why don't we start by having you tell uh, the audience about your background, your career in law enforcement prior to launching this business. So, so well, we, we're going to definitely do that. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody uh, who's viewing this uh, for your time. Um, we know that everyone's uh, busy and has a lot on their plate, but we really appreciate you joining us with this webinar. Um, Carla, who's in the background, we want to thank you. Uh, Dr. Bayes, we want to thank you. And of course, uh, we want to thank Ed DeVoe for the opportunity to uh, allow us to, to present this to you guys and explain to you a little bit about what this uh, whole security uh, entails. <clears throat> with that, uh, you know, we're going to take turns here, okay, so we don't get into a fight. And what we want to do is I'll leave it to Jose to explain, to start off with uh, letting you guys know a little bit about our background in law enforcement, and then uh, we can go for some questions and, and go from there, okay? Thank you yeah. so much. So uh, I just want to reiterate, I want to say thank you very much for allowing us the opportunity to uh, sit with you guys and maybe go through some of these questions and maybe uh, help you guys better understand uh, the security uh, uh, needs for this um, new venture in cannabis that you guys are looking forward to uh, launching. So with that said, let me just get into the background a little bit. My brother and I obviously um, started about the same time. We did everything together. So uh, back in 88, uh, we became uh, uh, officers with the Passaic County Sheriff's Department in New Jersey. Um, from there, uh, we worked in uh, correction and then we moved on to patrol and then uh, ultimately into narcotics as uh, detectives in the narcotics division. But uh, in uh, 96, uh, my brother and I were assigned to uh, the federal task force, the DEA, uh, uh, Drug Enforcement Administration. And we went on to uh, finish our career. We did about uh, 16 years, 15, 16 years assigned to the Drug Enforcement Administration. During that time, we, were, we had the ability and um, to conduct uh, major investigations on a, on a local, state, and federal levels. We also did uh, international cases, which included uh, money laundering cases and narcotics, uh, large amounts of narcotics. And during that time, uh, we started, we learned um, everything that had to do with surveillance, and that would include uh, wiretap investigations, physical surveillance, and um, uh, physical surveillance technology. and the technology side of it, monitoring the wiretap rooms and things of that nature, which is 
what we uh, really enjoyed to do, enjoyed doing, because that led us to uh, opening our own security company when we retired. Yeah, and doing and assisting us in, in doing what we do now. Yeah. Uh, Les, were you going to add something to that? Um, no, no, that's good. I think he covered all the bases. It's an interesting background. Um, uh, and I've seen um, uh, others come into the industry after uh, uh, a career in public safety. Um, uh, the um, So tell us how, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, Argus Security Solutions and how you brought your backgrounds to play in planning um, and building this business. Okay, sure. I'll take that uh, question as well. So uh, we both retired, again, like we do everything together, I guess, right? We retired in 2011. Uh, in 2013, we decided that we wanted to open up a security company and start applying our uh, expertise and trying to assist people with security. Uh, we started our first company at that time, which parlayed into Argus Security Solutions in, was it 2017, 2016? 2014. Uh, in 2014. So we, uh, we, we began doing... Um, uh, monitoring of of, uh, of uh, residential and commercial buildings, we started doing. Um, uh, we began doing uh, security guards, physical security for a lot of the locations. So what we're doing now is we're parlaying both of them. We're integrating both the security and the technology to assist us and assist the clients in, in better solutions for themselves. But. Uh, that's what we've been doing ever since we uh, we retired, and we find it to be uh, somewhat successful. Uh, do you have any um, any leaks now to other companies that are in uh, the cannabis industry? So yes, I'll take that. <clears throat> so um, we do have some affiliations uh, with the cannabis security. We have an affili affiliation with a company called Sorta. Okay, Sort. Uh, strategic operation and tactical risk. Uh, they're out of California. We're like a sister uh, partner, channel partner company where we work closely together uh, in in giving the customer the best solution. These uh, this company that, that that's out in California, we deal a lot with the cannabis industry. Uh, that's why we're here in New Jersey now, trying to uh, you know open up and 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 given to given our experience, I think that we're we're very well suited for this type of security, uh, given the experience that we have out in California. So yeah, that is our affiliation with them. We have another affiliation <clears throat> with another company called Decentry here out of New Jersey, uh, where we do all our uh, monitoring, monitoring station, uh, virtual guard, uh, uh, et cetera. So yeah, we do have an affiliation that help us uh, really understand the cannabis security industry. Uh, not only out in California, but uh, hopefully here in New Jersey as well. That's great. And I see uh, in the questions and answers, you're making some additional connections today. Uh, there are people in our audience who are in in uh, businesses related to the industry too that are here to connect with you. Uh, uh, let's move on to talk about the state requirements as we understand them today. Okay. So let's... Uh... That's yeah. So, um, as of the requirements right now, I think they're they're limited. Okay, but based on our our experience, we I think we have a good segue into what I think is going to happen. And obviously, uh, licensing is is a, is a big uh, is a big to do, right? So, um, in reference to the personnel that we're going to use, they're going to be armed and unarmed security for transportation of the product and the transportation of the proceeds as well. Uh, for the location, uh, we would use physical security along with the technology, um, but the requirements for, for, for our officers, uh, they need to have a SORA license, which is a, a license uh, required by the state of New Jersey for security officers to conduct security work. 
Um, the other thing that we would like to say is, or you uh, do is utilize retired and active police officers that are off duty to help us in moving the product and moving the proceeds from from the grow houses or the store uh, revenue to the banks, which would be the credit unions. Um, so I think that uh, I think that maybe that's what I, the the, uh, the the answer to the question. I mean, if there's anything else that you want to know, um, we can definitely uh, come back to it. Yeah, if if I may add, also with respect to that question, uh, like like my brother was saying, you know, we we'll, we'll be utilizing both, either armed and unarmed. But again, that's that's for the client to decide. I know that sometimes clients feel a little iffy about having armed guards on their site. So we will definitely accommodate them in whichever way or whatever route they want to take with regards to that. Uh, something else that, that I think should be pointed out is, again, like he said, the security uh, specs uh, for New Jersey is still not out, but given the, the, the experience that we have out in California, you know, we do know that you know, there, there's going to be some specs that they're going to be requiring, such as uh, exterior lighting, panic buttons, uh, access control, uh, video monitoring, uh, security guards. I mean, uh, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. We can answer and we can provide all of those uh, uh, solutions for, for, for anyone who's, who's looking to, uh, to, to secure their facilities with all, with, with all the specs required by the state of New Jersey. One other thing too that I'd like to, to point out is New Jersey State Police will always want to have accessibility to the locations throughout the state of New Jersey, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, utilizing uh, a te a, a camera technology where they'll be able to, you know, uh, access yeah. access the, the the cameras and and look into the facilities at all time. Again, we will be able to provide all that, uh, and that shouldn't be an issue because that's exactly right down our alley. And it's exactly what we do. Um, so I hope that that's that suffice. Uh, yeah, uh, we just had a question about identifying the uh, differences between armed and unarmed to include oh. I'm not sure what that is bonding. Um, so 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 let's let's talk a little bit about armed and unarmed. Okay, I know that some people have some questions, so I'd love to. It's a great question. I'd love to answer. Um, when you're handling a, a business such as this in cannabis, through our experience, we understand, we know that the that the risks are much higher. Okay, I know that we'll be able to use credit cards now and such when you in connection with the uh, credit unions, but there's always going to be a cash. Uh, uh, component there. And as, when well, it, as well as the product. As well as the product, mm -hmm. correct. So when we have those two things together, you know, given our experience at DEA and, and law enforcement, we know that could always present a problem. If you have an unarmed security guard at the facility, that really limits anything of, you know, what you can really do there without an armed guard. Now, that being said, an armed guard is there is more of a uh, deterrent. Deterrent. It's more of a deterrent uh, for the for the cannabis uh, uh, store, grow house. The the person who, who might want to come in and do some damage might might think about it twice as opposed to not someone without a weapon. Now, again, that being said, the person with the weapon is highly trained, and that weapon is only to be used. We we prefer they don't use it but it's only there pretty much as a permit. But God, God forbid something does happen uh, where somebody comes in and they're showing the gun, uh, you know. But the, sa the safety of the people that work at the facility, as well as the safety of the officer, if he's presented with a, with a life-threatening uh, situation. Other than that, there is no reason for it. Uh, and that, again, uh, coupled with the technology that we have in place, is it helps to minimize any issues that we can foresee happening at any of the facilities or with any of our vehicles that are transporting product or or proceeds. It, you know, it's an interesting um, um, difference that I've run across when working with businesses on security. 
whether or not they will consider on funds. It's, it's almost in the, what I've seen is in California, uh, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, more traditional, the, the, the more evolved markets, they really are taken aback by East Coast tendency to think about armed guards. They don't have armed guards out there and they think it's, you know, too much. But I have worked with, with uh, businesses that were locating in areas where there was no question in their mind, like the, in an area in Washington, D.C., for example, uh, where they, they simply said, we're going to have armed guards. The population here would expect it to do. Um, so it's a personal decision, uh, and it can sometimes, sometimes when you have a team that's East Coast and West Coast, there's a clash on this. Um, but I think um, Laz and Jose, with your company, would help uh, make that decision with a, a, a business. You know, you could help with an assessment of what their security risks are and, and uh, make that recommendation. That, that, that's correct. That is correct. So, so what we'll do, what we, what we always do is before we start uh, an account, we always like to come out, take a look at the facility, meet with the, uh, with the owners and the management and come up with a really good assessment, good assessment and come up with a great comprehensive uh, security solution for every customer. And, and keep in mind, every solution is customized to that customer. So if we have a customer who is was a little weary about having an armed guard there, then there are other things that we can do not to use an armed guard, utilizing technology and security guard and so on and so forth to to, to accommodate and, and give you the, the perfect solution. Excellent. And people are asking right now uh, about you know, the impact on, on potential thieves. If you have an armed guard, are they going to bring weapons where they wouldn't otherwise? Um, uh, there's there's um, uh, that kind of concern, and there's also a question about uh, you know uh, training people isn't the safest option to give up the money and to co uh, cooperate. And, and this is part of what you offer as well, isn't it? Uh, in, in place for safety and security. Yeah. All right. So uh, to speak, uh, let me just explain this a little bit. So what's happening is uh, we're seeing. In our industry, we're seeing a, an evolution, a change in the security uh, industry. So, what are pe what people are accustomed to, and I, and I'm sure that everyone will agree, is when when someone thinks of a security guard, right? They think of the old antiquated security guard who's sitting in a booth or has his feet up and he's falling asleep and he's not doing his job, right? So, uh, I like to say they're 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 being pushed out. What's happening now is. Our security guards are being trained in a much better light. And what happens is we're paying them a little bit more and we're integrating them with the technology. So as opposed to just having a security guard sitting at a, at a, at a facilities reading a book, you know, we have the ability to sit in our monitoring station and look down on the facilities and say, hey, do me a favor, go check this door. Something's not right with this and make a, a, a account for their, you know, their being there and checking and making sure that things are going smoothly. So my thing is, yeah, the training part of it is when they come to work for Argus Security, there is a training um, uh, program or, or, or module that we put together for them to train them with, to train them to work with, with and in conjunction with the cameras that we have in the technology and the analytics so that they understand, hey, listen, there's someone in the office that's, or in our, our, our monitoring station that is looking down and making sure that everything is secure. And if there is a problem, we're calling them to make sure they check it, they're, they're logging in, you know, doing whatever the protocols are based on what the clients need or want. So, and, and I'm sorry, I just wanna add something to that. Uh, if you look through the slides, you'll see that we have what we call the command center. Uh, and the command center is like a, like a police dispatch room, if, if, if you will. And what that does is, is it's direct connection, okay, with all of our security staff on the field. I'm talking about security guards, 
Uh, we're talking about armored vehicle uh, guards. Uh, we have uh, what's called the talk down uh, capability. The capability, where we put up a speaker uh, in the area of, of, or in the actual site where, you know, you got, you're conducting your business or off, do, off hours. And if someone comes near or close to the facility that does not belong there on off hours, we can utilize our command center to speak to these to these people uh, through our um, uh, our speaker system, uh, which at most point you know once you speak to them over the speaker, they think that you know there's uh, a, a, an alien talking to them and tell them to please move away, step away from the building. Police is on the way. Ninety percent of the time, which is a fact, they're gone. So again, this is the same system that we use to keep our, our security guards accountable for their job. And they're also, this system is also in constant communication with our armored vehicles uh, while they're transporting either currency or product to make sure that they're using the, the correct routes. If we have to divert them from a route, we can do so. So just keep in mind that the command center is constantly 24 hours a day seven days a week, 365 days a year, always there. It never gets sick, it never gets hurt, it never pulls out. Uh, we have that capability and we use that closely, again, with all of our security personnel. We train them to work along with the, this technology. And, and just to add one more quick, one more quick note, the, you know, it is based on the client's needs. So when we do the assessment on that, particular site for that client, we will come to that client and say, listen, this is what we think you need. You know, you know whether that be an armed guy, whether that be an, an unarmed security officer, the technology, you know, we, and it's a cost savings, but I mean, that's what we would like to do. If every client and every location is different than the last, it's not a cookie cutter. Right. And so your, your setup allows you to do both both staff or online security personnel who might be you know, at the entrance, might be in a, in a command center within the facility itself, um, uh, uh, or to do offsite monitoring, which is often a requirement or, or a, a desired solution to the need to monitor uh, seven by 24. During your off hours, you can then uh, have people in your command center for monitoring the video and, and making sure that they're, they're Absolutely right. And, and, and please keep in mind, uh, it, you know, having the command center and utilizing these cameras with the analytics, right? Because they have sophisticated analytics that can tell the difference between a cat, a dog, a car, a human being. Uh, utilizing the system can really you know, bring your security cost down, in some cases, up to 30%, which is a huge cost savings, especially if you have a big facility where you're utilizing a lot of guards, where you really don't need the guards. And, the, you know, just keep in mind, every single camera becomes a guard. So you can secure the entire facility with limited amount of physical guards, utilizing the technology and cover your entire site much better, much more accurate, and at a cost savings with much better security. Uh, one question that just came in uh, uh, is about, and I don't know whether this is in your experience, there is research on this that you can speak to, but uh, the question was, from your experience in California, does the crime rate in the neighborhood of, of a cannabis dispensary go down given the security requirements? Want to answer that? Yeah. So based on the research that we've done and a uh, company that we work with out there in California, you know, to say that uh, the crime rate has gone down, that question really is a little difficult to, to answer only because it depends on where that facility is. If it's in a, in a high crime, crime area, the, when the, the, the likelihood is that your percentages go up with crime. Right, so people will be looking to to uh, uh, conduct illegal activities around that 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 area. But depending on where you are, right. So uh, what I would think is that that with our security, it, dimin it diminishes, it, it lowers the crime c 
capabilities because it's it's so secure that it's kind of difficult for someone to be able to get in. If I at all. think contrary to 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 some people's expectation, uh, it actually does um, uh, drop the crime rate in an area, as you say, where there was a crime. If you're going into a, an area where there's not much crime that we can hold, but I think we've seen it in cities most often uh, in locations that were very kind of industrial and barren. Uh, that it has um, been a boon to the neighborhood uh, to have it. One of the things that I noticed, because I, I have, I know people that actually build out these uh, dispensaries. Mm -hmm. What they do is they put them in places that you would think are really bad areas, but they're so discreet, they're unnoticed buildings. They're not, they're not the flashy buildings. They look. On the outside, they look like an old factory, but when you walk on on the inside, it's it's a whole technology built out beautifully, and people don't even know it's there. To be quite honest with you, so I mean, it depends. It all depends on what the client wants, what the client needs, and and the area that 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 uh, the facilities are in. Right. Uh, that, that answers the question. Uh, I, there's a, a, another question about 24-hour um, uh, direct surveillance. I think I can answer this one. Basically, the requirement in the cannabis industry in most of the states that I've worked in is that 7 by 24 cameras must be working and they must be in every single area where cannabis is being handled or stored. So the surveillance cameras and the, the layout of those, that's another thing that a security company uh, like Argus can help you to establish. What equipment do you need and where should it be in order to capture that? Um, uh, so yeah, it is mandatory. That, um, um, Just to add to that, uh, yes, the cameras are 24 hours, seven days a week, and they must be, they must record. Right record so that we can see it live and go back to be able that's what they're that's what i know that's what they're going to require because it was i think they require that in california they're yeah. going to require that here although the the specs haven't come out yet i'm pretty sure that they're going to require that. well they require surveillance in the um, medical um, cannabis businesses the alternative treatment centers uh and and there is a fee that goes directly to the state Correct. I don't know whether they're still going to be looking for that, but there is a requirement as well that you do backup of all of your videos and, uh, for some period of time so, so that they're available to do investigations. That, that is absolutely correct. Uh, I can assure you almost with certainty that, the, that New Jersey will require that from every single facility. And that is to make sure that you can record what's going on. And I think they want not 30 days, but 60 days out uh, so that we can go back and do a forensic analysis if need be. Uh, forensic analysis meaning that we go back and, and check uh, the video uh, to, to do an investigation. If God forbid something happened, someone stole something, someone got hurt, money was taken, so on and so forth. Um, so I'm almost positive that is going to be a requirement. Uh, but then again, you know, our command center, again, will we'll be able to, to help everyone uh, with that solution. Uh, yeah. and, and, and it works out beautifully. That's great. Another big area um, uh, of need is in the transportation of cannabis products. And that could be when uh, a cultivator decides to take their, their crop to a, you know, to a dispensary or to... Uh, manufactured to transform that into other products. It could be uh, in the actual delivery of, um, of, uh, of a product to homes, to individuals, or it could be in the transportation and distribution. Um, but whenever cannabis is being moved from point to point in all of the states, it's tracked. And you know precisely what it is and where it's going uh, and there's always a requirement there be two people uh, in a vehicle um, uh, a 
and the variety, you know, that you have a lot of compartment variety of things. But can you talk about how you can also support that aspect of a cannabis uh, uh, business? That that is so. Uh, so, so let me talk about, a little bit about this because this is, believe it or not, one of the most important parts of our security, right? Nobody, nobody, it, it, it becomes very difficult, you know, to move product and to move money. And, you know, the client's nervous, you know, is the product going to get to its destination? Is the money going to go get to the bank? So on and so forth. Okay. So we do use everything that the state requires for us to be able to move the product and the money. Now that means that it's armed guards. It is uh, security vehicles, unmarked and marked, okay? And they are all fitted in, uh, uh, in perspective to, to making sure that the, the vehicle is armored so that it is difficult for someone to, to attempt, a attempt, attempt the robberies. But what we do is we go one step further, okay? So we get all the requirements that we need from the state. But again, we go back to the command center. Right, so our command center uh, is in constant communication with the two security uh, personnel in the vehicle, in the armored vehicle. And what we do there is we make sure that, that they're secure and that they're on the right route and the GPS is constantly being monitored from our command center. If that vehicle for any moment, any second diverts from its route, we immediately, immediately start making calls. And if need be, we start going into our protocols, which is notifying the police department that we have a vehicle out there and we can get communication with it, so on and so forth. And then we go through our protocols to make sure that the security guards, the vehicle and the client's uh, product and, and uh, currency is secure. The, the, the one more thing too, is that just so that everyone knows, every security officer whether a security officer, retired police officer, or or uh, off-duty police officer that works for us and is going to move product and is going to move uh, currency, is is going through a is going to have a, a, an in-depth uh, background check, so that we make sure that these people that we hire to do this are all on the up and up and vetted correctly. Yeah. Now, uh, Someone's asked um, whether you intend to go for a, a distribution license, a class four distributor license for moving. I think, uh, I, I, I haven't heard that you plan to do that to actually launch a, a, a distribution business. My understanding is that as a subcontractor, um, uh, you'll be able to work alongside. What I'm not sure of yet is whether the state will require your workers to be vetted through them in order to work or whether it's your vetting is acceptable. That, that kind of detail, I'm sure we'll figure that out in the future. Uh, but in a lot of the models that I've worked with for businesses, what you have is a um, one employee and then a security personnel with them doing a delivery. Uh, now, I think for, though, for, for um, the kind of use of your armored um, uh, vehicles, if someone needed banking uh, support, need to, need to move cash to the bank, that would be something that I'm sure would be uh, acceptable to the state without, you know. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's definitely an unmarked vehicle um, uh, that, that uh, you're, you can't use a marked vehicle in this industry. Um, and you have to have a locked, you know, bolted cage for your goods. Right. Um, in the vehicle. So you've got above and beyond in your solutions. Um, um, yes. Certainly a great deal of knowledge about, um, you know, what the needs are. And so I'm, I'm going to encourage everybody to reach out to Laz and, and, and Jose uh, to start planning security. I mean, I've been telling people it's, it's not too early to start planning for the things you know you're going to need. So if you've got a facility and you've got a basic plan, it wouldn't be too soon to bring them in to help them take a look at what your security needs are and help build you a security plan. 
Um, while uh, I've seen um, states kind of move away from requesting higher security plan, um, as I, they used to do um, uh, in the application process, they will be asking specifically, what are you going to do to prevent diversion? What are you going to prevent to, uh, what are you going to do to prevent um, unauthorized access to your facility? You know, a series of questions which are going to require some sophisticated planning. Uh, you'll also need that help in order to figure out what your costs are going to be. Um, there's a significant cost in the security um, uh, hardware uh, and software that you need. Um, uh, and, but as, as Lazar and, and Jose are saying, there are ways to cut your costs by using a security firm so that you don't have to put the bill for every aspect of it. I think that uh, this has been a great uh, presentation, uh, and I want everybody to know they'll get a copy of the presentation uh, emailed to them after this, as well as access uh, to the video. Um, so, is there any subject that uh, you'd like to add uh, some thoughts to uh, before we close? Well, uh, no, I just. Listen, I'm, I'm really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, all I would say is, if you if you'd love to reach out to us, please take a look at the website. Please take a look at our presentation. Um, we are here to answer any questions uh, that you have with regards to security. We will be more than happy to come out to your facility or come out and uh, give you an assessment and uh, work closely with you in, in securing uh, your facility and giving you the best solutions possible. Um, again, uh, we can't thank you enough. I'm sure Jose feels the same yeah. way. And uh, thank you again. I just want to say thank you. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands that <clears throat> we're looking to build relationships as well. It's not just a security company that's going to, you know, implement your security systems and walk away. We're looking to build a, a community and we're looking to build a, a, a great relationship with all our, all our clients. And we want to make sure that our clients know that we're only a phone call away. So if there's any questions or anything we can help them with, we are here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye.